So, and the topic today is a bit controversial. It's one of those unpopular opinion. And why Kubernetes is inappropriate for platforms and how to make it better. So I'm MJ, my Twitter handle is Manjirdas. I work at Cast AI as staff engineer. I used to work for Red Hat, so you might know me from projects like Azure Red Hat OpenShift and things like that. So I built quite a, a lot of Kubernetes platform during my career. And if you end up at this point in your talk, scrolling your phones, looking to the laptop, please check out Cast AI. It's like we do some funky things with Kubernetes and uh, we're pushing the boundaries in some areas where Kubernetes lacks. But this talk is not about that, it's just uh, some spoilers. So why I'm eligible to talk in this subject, why I think I'm eligible, because in my career I built more than 20 high scale platforms across the globe, like from Kubernetes 1.0, previously OpenShift V2, Gears and Cartridges, if you remember. So like I've been around the block for quite some time in Kubernetes ecosystem. And I'm not happy what we're seeing. But before we go into this, so anybody who knows Stefan, so this is the original spin-off of the talk we gave at KubeCon. So if you saw that talk, basically it was the same ripoff. You can change audience, basically, or scroll online. So, thought experiment for today. Let's build a platform. Let's build a platform based on top of Kubernetes and let remind ourselves why we like Kubernetes in the first place and what we don't like. So things everybody got used to now and takes for granted is object universe. Like we, we got so used to it, we're building operators, controllers, we're building our own object universes around whatever you want. Like these days, if you've been to talks here, like everybody's building operator, eBPF, AI, ML, like everybody has an operator, everybody has CRD. And we start living with those where we split those by teams. Everybody gets a namespace. You get this tooling cluster, you get this production cluster, and your team gets a namespace. Like everybody gets namespace. And you deploy these APIs, you consume them, you write a custom logic, and happy days. We, we use controller runtime, queue builder, meta controllers to implement the logic. We write these reconcile loops, like I don't think I need to explain what it is. We have client go to generate the uh, you know, clients and clients for any other languages. It's like ecosystem is blooming and we're just taking this for granted because it's there, it's easy to bootstrap. Like we don't think anymore how our API is gonna look like, how our client is gonna look like. We just take it and do what we do best, deliver business value. We're getting back to multi-tenancy. Like we have namespaces, we have clients, but when you start operating platforms at scale, your customers start using clients and you hit them like, hey, you're a tenant one. Use that in your namespace client because you either have access to everything or to one namespace. And CRDs, like, they are nice and shiny, but they are cluster scope. This means as soon as you get a cluster with 500 nodes, like 200 teams playing inside of it, and now one team needs one CRD version and another one's another, you kind of get to this place where it's not very comfortable, you as a platform owner. So let's just check up. It looks okay, like we got to live, we live with this now. It's our day-to-day -day job. And, but this is 2017, nothing changed. Like we added a lot of these things after CRDs in 2016. We didn't innovate that much about of them on top of that, with the exception of machinery improvements, validations and things like that. Reality is this, like tell me who operates more than five clusters globally these days? Like who runs in a production? Who, like how do you keep it up? Like how do you make it, multi-tenancy still via namespaces, but now we have five, 10 clusters around. Even clusters basically become this different challenge. How do we share data? So we started building these bridges, like wide representations, like our service meshes, our submariners. Like there is a lot of projects starting to build up on top how we connect things together. And ecosystem stepped in. We created other projects to solve some problems. They are not directly solved like multi-tenancy, but they 
people start using them in the different ways. Like Cube were born not to solve multi-cluster problem, but people start using those in some ways. And how do you make this now multiple cluster consistent? Like you start build those brown roads between your clusters where you have your Argos, Flux, cross planes, basically to pushing GitOps to the multiple places and making and hoping that everything syncs, everything is the same and consistent and compliant. So we kind of started creating this one more standard to keep everything in sync. But not only technology is a problem. When you have a platform at scale, when you're giving us services, and you've already seen multiple talks where people say, like, you should treat your platform as a product. So it's a, it's a different persona into the mix, which is not accounted. In this case, usually what you have, you have a platform owner, basically your product manager who owns the platform as a product. You have a service providers, so your database as a service team, your storage as a team, like people who sits in your organization in a corner and wants to give a service to wider organization. And they have a different responsibilities. And if you throw like third party in a mix, you want now to include some security scanner from third party vendor, they have to get access to your platform too in a secure way. And in the end, what you build is something for users to use, like a platform. So reality check is this. We end up, like you build it now, it works fine. Two years down the line, its complexity explodes. Your CI CDs are enormous in size. It's a hard to extend, hard to onboard new third party like users, service providers. And let's be honest, it's not a good experience for any of those three roles. It's like, it's a, and reality check, Kubernetes was built to run container. It does it very well. It was never built for platforms. So this is why we like you. But you see, there is some caveat. And what world would look like if Kubernetes would be built for platforms? And you might know this guy. He once said, Kubernetes is a platform for building platforms. It's a better place to start, not an end game. And we don't like a current state. I think we can agree on that. There is some rough edges. So it means it's not the end game yet. And we need a bit of mind shift too. So currently we think in this traditional mindset where it's like you take this yellow Lego box, you get a box, you get a box, and I tell you build a car. But that means you will not build the same car. And for those who are hiring, I have this analogy saying like, if you need to onboard now in, to hire in your team a person to support a Kubernetes cluster, you have this big cluster, you need SRE to support it. You've got the best talent in the market. How fast he can on board to be able to support your platform? Is he good if he's a good, like in a tech stack? It will be days, because Kubernetes is Kubernetes. But now if you need to hire somebody to support your internal developer's platform, it's like it might be months, because there is no two sim same platforms out there. And this is where we need this more grown up approach. Like we need this Lego where two people building it would get the same result. So let's go through this now. What we visualizing in an in a open source land and how this could look like differently through the three personas views. So first one is a platform owner. Basically your product owners, product managers, basically you own the keys to the platform. You are an enabler. So what you need to do is give a well-defined area for your users to work in. Single entry point, no complexities, just iterate. And it should abstract all the complexities out there. It's multi-cluster world we've basically been dreaming of. And it doesn't matter where it is. It should scale horizontally. We should not be reinventing things when we're doing like. It's a techno technology agnostic challenge. What as a product owner, you need to deliver. And the goal is still let users build. So these small blocks represent like a area, like imagine a virtual API server. And every different user can do with different things with those things. And we like opinions as engineers, but we should not enforce our opinions to other engineers. 
which is hard, but reality is like you should give a range of services to them and they use what we want. If they don't want something, they can build their own. So that's the goals of the platform owner. Let's see now provider, your DBAs, PKIs, and other teams which sits in the organization. You want to give a service. So in this case, you basically want to be consistent, doesn't matter which cloud you are, effective, effective and in a secure way. And as a database, as a service team, you should not care if it's a single region, five regions, or 20 regions, because you have to have consistent interfaces how you provide the services. Platforms should distribute that across the globe, or even multi-regions or multi-cloud. It's the same thing. And you see these tra trains in the middle and rails. This represents the tooling itself. Like We need a consistency when we do these things. Like Argos could do those things, but in a limited way. The reality is like we're building towards platform as a service framework. So if you are that team trying to deliver something, what do you need? Like, is the CRDs enough? Just like throw this concept of build your own APIs and that's it. Like tools like Helm, Flux, Argo, Crossplane, Cast AI, like doesn't matter. Like again, you bear back for the security. Enough? Do we need something more? But the reality is like we should not be opinionated about these things too. And the question we get usually is like, what about compute? Kubernetes was built to run containers. You can't do these things about com containers. And uh, for those in the audience basically have gray here at this point, we had this term already. We called utility computing. Because what computing is, is just another API and these uh, Bluish thingies represents uh, mounted compute clusters to your platform. We're basically working towards the goal where we don't care about compute. It's still there, it's an API. And who gives you a compute? Is it a V cluster, kubevert, cluster API? Again, it's just a part of your service offering. So at this point in time, compute in this paradigm in this new world is attached. It's not in a center anymore when in usual Kubernetes cluster. And I will show a demo a bit how this could look like in a platform which builds on top. So user, user is basically the, you know, our main persona in the center, which basically we care most. Everything what I talked at this point is just to enable our developers to deliver a value. So if I'm a user and seeing this picture, it's like you could argue it's not less complicated than the existing world we saw before. But in reality, this is like if you see the white lines appeared on the, the, this is what I want. Like I'm a user, I own this three greenish fields blocks out there. And this is what I want to see. It's a smooth experience, single entry point, easy to navigate. And from my point, I, don't care if it's in Azure or Google or on my premise. It should be a smooth experience. Easy to navigate, easy to do. And again, it's your as a platform builder's decision. If it will be per application, per region, per cloud, it should be agnostic. So what we described here is not Kubernetes. Like you can agree, this is not, you can't do this now. And by throwing more clusters into the mix, more virtual clusters into the mix, you can solve this problem. Anybody who works like with a virtualized control planes know that it has some limits too when you start scaling it at the tenant level horizontally. But we tend to solve this problem by throwing more clusters into the mix. So we need new primitives, new methods, which would have built in a concept of multi-tenancy, regions, clouds, regionality, and everything. And this is where comes KCP. So KCP originally started in Red Hat, and it was, it was donated to open source communities, contributors and maintainers picked it up and pushed it forward when the change, wave of priorities changed. So currently, KCP is CNCF sandbox project, and 
what it is, it's a framework to bootstrap Kubernetes-like SaaS platform. It's basically Angular JS of Kubernetes land, where you build your own things on top of that. It's not something you can pick up and start running with it, like Kubernetes is. It's just a framework which enables you to build things. And there is a work already in Upstream to make it generic control plane overall in Kubernetes code base, 90% done. You can already pl play with it. I will show you some Git repositories where we have it done. And before I jump further, I want to show a demo where how this could look like. Like I have a small mini SaaS build based on, based on KCP, which is not pure KCP, but one of the examples. And because I'm bad at naming, root region is based in Europe, beta is in US. Not like I just needed to name them US and Europe. So I'm now interacting with, if I show you here, I have an APIs available to me where basically feels and looks like Kubernetes itself. I have these APIs. And we have these comments where I can show the three of my workspaces. Each and every workspace, and I didn't cover that in a talk, is a, like a virtual API server. You can nest them together, when you can group them together in this. And at this point, I'm seeing this uh, management side of the platform where I have my tenants in one folder, core components here, another, some location placements there. So if I do, yes, use root, paros, tenants. Sorry? Better? So I just switched the different, and this is live demo. This is what you get when you don't record things. API resources. It's the same API server. I can so get users so I can create my CRDs and things like that. The one thing which it has, it's a part of the KCP core, is uh, it has this concept of API export. And I don't have it here. Yes, use. Let's switch to different. So API export is like your API as a service endpoint. So your service team provides this guy and says like, this is my database as a service API. Where once you create it in your own folder, it becomes globally available to everybody who can subscribe to this. So that's a platform view. You can see what components, what third parties on board that and everything. It feels like Kubernetes. On here, I can, I am as a user, I see total different structure of folders because as in my last slide, this a green fields. Like I don't see what other people or platform complexities. So in, in this case, example, I have clusters as auxiliary compute. So if I say VS use clusters, get workspaces, Yes, mini API resources. I have different API nows, and even I have pods because basically it's a compute attached to my platform, which I can use because it builds into the same same structure. And I can get to another one like my prod cluster, and I get different, different views. So example, I go back. And the third one is like food demo. It doesn't have any pods because it doesn't have anything. So now as a developer, and I moved where I didn't need it. So before I jump to the slides, so create test. I can create a new one, basically, and 
do what I want. Like I, it can be anything. It can be remote cluster. You can give it a database as a service and mount some other interfaces. Like you need to turn your imagination. If CRDs can deliver something, you can automatically inject them. And as you might see, there is quite a few similarities with Linux file system tree. And that's intentional because it gives a different perspective in a hierarchical view of the, of the platforms. And you can see you can create them by organization. So we have like org organization for finance, engineering, management, basically people has their own areas of work and you can nest them as many levels as you want. And you can even ask as a developer saying like Pharos, location, selector, equal root. And I created a new one, which from the URL, it's ambiguous, but now it landed in the particular shard in the particular region. So if you build this on top, you can make it smooth experience to land data in one or another region where you want. And that's just one example of how this could be implemented. So KCP is a framework exploring these ideas, like how the Kubernetes could look like if we build it to build platforms. It's a Kubernetes-like API, totally 100% based on your Kubernetes API server code upstream. Uh, everything, at this point, I think almost everything is upstream, about 80%. It's built into, in a mindset of how this would look like for the different personas. Not only your SREs and users on a site, where every request goes through the SRE to, can you install this operator? Can you update this component? Usually it's SREs on the other end or your DevOps receiving those. How we can enable somebody else to do the things and don't compromise security and different things. Basically built-in, multi-tenant, multi-region support out of the box. Workspaces basically is a generic control plane on its own. It's a as I mentioned, new flavor of Kube API server in upstream. And everything under one API endpoint, so you don't need to play with 5, 10 cube contacts, different authentication methods for different clouds. Everything is just changing in SCLI as I show. And everything horizontal is scalable, sharding, like what Kubernetes doesn't have. It basically enables you to deploy sharded ways. And these are basically two Git repositories which are out there. So main is KCP dev, KCP where all the KCP code is located. The second one is uh, just a skeletoning to show how you can initiate a generic control plane on its own, a single tenant Kube API server where you can slice and dice, choose different, uh, different APIs you want to, it avail to be available. So if, for example, you're building something which would look like Kubernetes, but you don't need service accounts, you don't need config maps or secrets, you can go there and disable these components and have this empty API server basically doing these things. And that's basically it. I think I rushed the presentation quite, quite hard. So is there any questions around this? How many people are currently involved in a KCP? So we have a part of the original core people who left Red Hat uh, moved to another company. So they are still around. I would say community itself is like from active contributors from five to 10 people. Whereas a lot of, quite a few silent contributors like in any project, which we as a community are aware we're out there. We know we're building on top of it, but we're still chatting with them and trying to them to get to the get back to the community. So project is alive and kicking, and we moving through the toil of rebases and upstreaming the things. Not in a pace while it was under Red Hat umbrella, but it's still there.
So KCP itself is built on top of Cube API server code. Okay, I repeat the question. Uh, do I need a Cube API server to run a KCP itself? Answer is that KCP itself is built on top of Cube API server code. You run it and it has part of the code bit. Like, yes, it runs as a standalone binary and it looks itself as a Cube API server. Like in the operator's world, you need a Kubernetes cluster where you deploy operator and it's run. It's basically, it piggybacks on the API server to register the CRDs. This guy is an API server on its own. And that generic control plane is an example of that where you can get a personalized API server experience, basically. So do, we, do you use something else as a backing storage to work around the TCD limitations? So one of the things which I forgot to show in a demo is if I do this, I have two shards registered in the system. Both of the shards are its own deployments of, uh, think of like, in a old world you would have two clusters. Here you have two shards. Both of the shards has its own data stores. So in theory, you could work with VTCD limitations by adding more shards and sh shard horizontally. In my example, I showed I don't use VTCD, I use Kine. And I basically do that because I think there is uh, other possibilities how you could work around some scalability limits, like uh, how do you move data between shards? If you have something like Spanner backing your shards globally, the data move becomes SQL update over moving data from one ETCD to another. So, and I know a few other players who use KCP going to the similar way where they're moving away from ETCD and moving more to SQL land for the data movability and scalability questions. Is it more performant? I don't think at any, Anybody at this point publicly came out with a scalability benchmarks where we would compare SQL versus CTCD. So I'm not aware of anybody like publicly stating that we can do better. Cool. Any other questions? Going once, going twice. Cool, so I'm still around. If you have any questions or discussions, catch me up. And I think I still have a few stickers in my backpack if you're interested to put them on your laptop. Thank you very much.